Hi, I'm Brian London here at the Metals Investor Forum. I'm here with Jeff Wilson of Precipitate Gold, a company that I've recommended for some time in Gold Newsletter and I'm very familiar with. Jeff, just outside in the uh, company area, we were talking about this exciting new anomaly that you've developed. And, and really, it's different than anything you've had before because you're using a soil anomaly, which is a direct registration of all the elements, gold and, and copper and zinc. They're all kind of coincident, but not typically associated with the geophysical surveys as you've been working with. That's correct. Can you kind of explain what the difference that is and what this, this kind of a new model you're finding is? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think admittedly we, um, we were going after a certain signature in our prior work and mm -hmm. we had some early drill success uh, in the first round of drilling on the project based on a specific thesis, if you will, yeah. related to uh, geochemical analysis, soil analysis, as you say, and geophysics. Um, some of what we've seen in recent months has shone a, a slightly different light on a different aspect of how we might want to interpret some of this mm -hmm. stuff, and, and that's pointed us in a different direction. So we've gone off just to the east of our existing known sort of area of interest yeah. and taken samples, and, and partly it's a different geophysical environment. It's a little bit more subdued than the mm -hmm. high chargeability that we drilled previously. But what we're seeing, as you mentioned, is a really high concentration of uh, gold in soil, lead, zinc, and copper, mm -hmm. all within a relatively uh, contained area, consistent area, and much higher elevations of mineralization or these elements than mm -hmm. we've seen anywhere else on the project. So this is a, a very much a standout, standalone, new uh, surface anomaly or surface yeah. expression that is unlike anything else we've seen on the project. What's interesting about it as a sidebar to that is it is situated a long strike uh, mm -hmm. and in the same kind of geophysical environment as our neighbors Gold Quest, where they've had recently had a, a VMS discovery of their own. So tying those th two things together, it certainly makes this new area very pre prospective for us and will certainly be a key focus for our next round of drilling. You know what I found interesting about that is Gold Quest and talking to them about it at, at uh, the previous metals investor forum, they made their that discovery between two geophysical chargeability highs, Correct. and just happened to drill under where they got a uh, a soil sample which which was pretty rich in gold, and they just decided to drill there. And then they made the discovery, but not on the chargeability highs. And and you kind of had a different experience in that your big discovery hole at Ginger Ridge was on a chargeability. High, but then you decided with this new information from Goldcrest, let's go do some soil surveys, and you found an anomaly off of that geophysical indication that was stronger than anything you've you've seen before. Correct. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, this is exploration. This is a process yeah. of elimination. Uh, sometimes you need to figure out where you don't want to be in order mm -hmm. to figure out where you want to be. Um, this is a big land package, and our, you know, our entire land package had seen no prior work, no prior drilling. Right. So, whereas our neighbors at Gold Quest, you know, are a hundred drill holes into their exploration work, yeah. there's been a lot of trial and error it's beneficial for us to look at what they're doing next door and, and see if we can garner any information that can yeah. expedite our processes. And as you say, that's exactly what happened in this, in this instance. They had success in an environment that we had not otherwise tested mm -hmm. on our ground. We saw that we had an analogous environment in, yeah. in terms of an area between two chargeability highs uh, that was on trend from their discovery where we really hadn't done any mapping. So we mm -hmm. went in, we did mapping and, and, and took these samples and lo and behold, uh, this is an area that's now lit up with some of the highest concentrations of gold and lead and zinc that we've seen anywhere on our project. So, um, you know, utilizing what's happening next door to help expedite our processes yeah. has been cost saving and, and time saving for us. Because sure. really it's, it's not only a similar uh, geologically, it really is the same geologically. The whole area, the whole region, it's a district size play. Uh, the, the geophysical surveys that you and Goldcrest have done show that it's all kind of conjoined and, and uh, similar in origin. And they've got a world-class discovery already and are making more discoveries. And what I find really exciting from a precipitate standpoint is that you're a much earlier stage uh, and you finally have the funding to really go at these, not only doing the proper prep work, but actually drilling these targets now. Yes. So you're going to have some news coming up and uh, 
and some of the best targets I think out there. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, to, before getting to the drilling part of it, one of the things that's been uh, a really useful validation for for all of us in that belt, in terms of your your comment about the geology and mm-hmm. and, and and the extent that this mineralization could still be identified in the belt. You know, we've seen Agnico Eagle come in on this uh, financing of GoldQuest, right. putting twenty three million dollars into that. We know that a lot of that is earmarked for ongoing exploration yeah. with Agnico's belief that this has the potential to become a district scale uh, play, and that's speaks to why we're there. You know, we felt all along that this was an underexplored district that had the same kind of uh, attractive geology throughout, Mm -hmm. but very little work done. So there, there in lied the opportunity for us. And uh, as you point out about drilling, we now have not only uh, a very uh, prospective target at Ginger Ridge that we're going in to start drilling, say, in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, By the end of May, we should have drills turning uh, where we'll do somewhere between six and 12 holes at a minimum. As you say, we're well financed for that. Um, So not only can we execute on that program, but Mm -hmm. if there's a desire to continue on or expand the program, we have the financial flexibility to do that. And that's critical um, because uh, you want to be in a position of strength. You don't right. want to be backed into a corner in the market where you're deploying your last dollar uh, on a hope and a dream of a drill hole. So this is an exciting time. Uh, there'll be a lot of critical news flow that'll come out from us over the course of the next several months, mm-hmm. and uh, we're excited to execute. Well, that's time to invest in these juniors when you have drill results coming up, and you're going to have that. So yeah, absolutely great, Jeff. Thanks so much for your time. Thank Appreciate you, it. Appreciate it.